Good morning. It is great to be with you again. This is an invitation for us to uh, gather, and the talking has been wonderful. I encourage us to start this morning by listening to this song. They don't talk about Always feeling like you're sneaking around Feeling like you're lying to Everyone who's ever loved you You're surrounded by all your friends But you're terrified to let So okay. Thank you. 
Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Fayetteville. My name is Enoch Anglin, but you can call me E, and I use they, them pronouns at the moment. Uh, I'm on the board, the Welcoming Congregation Committee, and the Web of Life, among other things, and I'm glad to see everyone here. Unitarian Universalism is a religious tradition that values freedom in religious thought and journey. We uphold the unity of our interconnections, connections to each other, to all of life, and to the precious universe of which we are a part. We affirm the universality of love and hope as we journey together in community, and we welcome you, whoever you are in the, at this moment, and wherever you are in your spiritual journey. For those of you joining us online, welcome. If you are new, please check out our website, uufayetteville.org, for more information. For those of you visiting us for the first time in person, you'll find a visitor information card in the seat back in front of you. We'd love for you to fill this one out so we can get, to, uh, get you on the email list and keep you informed of our events. Later in our service, we'll have a time where you are invited to come forward and drop a stone symbolizing your joy or concern into our bowl of water. If you have a joy or concern you'd like to share, we invite you to fill out one of the yellow cards you will find on the seat back in front of you. There's a place there to indicate if you want your joy or concern shared aloud or if you want it to be confidential and shared only with leadership. If you fill out a yellow card, you can bring that forward at the time that we do joys and concerns. If you are online, you may write your joys and concerns in the comments there at that time. Please note that those comments will be public. If you have a need for hearing assistance, our AV tech, David, can help with that. Children are always welcome in our service, but there is a staffed nursery downstairs if you prefer. Please remember to silence your cell phones as we enter into our service. In honor of Trans Day of Visibility, I would like to share a poem with you I wrote not long ago. Um, it's about visibility and I have titled it, And Yet. I sit in my room, eyes pace the wall, and yet life goes on as if it were nothing at all. I shave my beard, my face feels so small, and yet life goes on as if it were nothing at all. I button my shirt, my pants are too tall, and yet, life goes on, as if it were nothing at all. I make some coffee and grab my shawl, and yet, life goes on, as if it were nothing at all. I watch the news, my face starts to fall. I clutch my chest and grab the wall. Another one dead, another great fall. Another new bill to end us all. Will there be justice? Will we have the gall to fight our oppressors to be alive in a mall? Every close shave could be a close call. Every blouse button could be our downfall. Every chin, hair, red lip, deep draw. Every curl, every clip, packer, gaff, or bra. Every tainted letter of the name you used to call. And yet life goes on as if it were nothing at all. Thank you. This is an emotionally up and down service. <laughs> we are acknowledging trans visibility today. The, the day, the official day is later in the month. But Renee asked me if I would, if Sky and I would do this service and uh, this is when we're here. <laughs> I'll have to be back on campus later in the month, but I'm here for spring break. Happy to be here with you. Our opening words uh, this morning come from Reverend Sharon Wiley. We speak so often of brokenness in religious life. Let us speak today of wholeness. You are welcome here, all of you. Every part of you beautiful just the way you are. Here, you do not need to be something more or less. No holding back, no hiding, no exerting yourself, no trying to do more or be more. You have inherent worth and dignity. Nothing to prove here, nothing to prove to me or the person sitting next to you 
or to the children or to anyone. You don't have to try and be witty or more quiet or more outgoing. You are beautiful. Every part of you beautiful just the way you are. You do not need to change anything about yourself to be welcome here. Your skin, your hair, your belly, your limbs, your face, all beautiful just the way they are. You are extraordinary, each and every one of you, each and every one of you different from each other and beautiful in your own beautiful way, breathtaking. Good morning. My name is Ali. I use he, him pronouns. Please light the chalice with me. I hope it change in words. We light this chalice. We symbolize our faith, our lives in this world, making our vision of the life of the liberation of the and daring to be remembered for the love of God. All right. And then my name is Sky, I pronounce she, her. And we will be in our teal hymnals on page 1053. And if everyone, if you're able to, uh, rise and, and sing with me. Good morning, everybody. Do not touch this mic. There's a, sign, uh, there's a severe sign up here. I just noticed the severe signage. Do not touch this mic. <laughs> and I, that was my first thing. Uh -huh. Hi, y'all. I'm Jules. I'm Jules Taylor, and I am so happy to see Stevie and Sky here. It's great to have y'all. Thank you. And thank you for asking me to do our story for all ages. I'm excited. This is called Be Who You Are by Todd Parr. Be who you are. Be old. Be young. Be a different color. Wear everything you need to be you. Speak your language. 
Learn in your own way. Be proud of where you're from. Be your own family. Just be who you are. Be silly. Be brave. Dance. Play, discover, learn, read. Share your feelings. Happy, mad, sad, silly, scared, proud. Just be who you are. Try new things. Be confident. Stand up for yourself. <laughs> Be energetic. Be peaceful. Be the best that you can be. Just be who you are. It doesn't matter what color you are, where you are from, or who's in your family. Everyone needs to be loved. Always love yourself. And be who you are. The end, love, Todd. As a community of people that care about each other, we share our various joys and concerns. We invite you to share your ups and downs as you desire. You can come to the front and drop a stone for any joy or concern, shared or confidential, expressed or held in your heart. As you drop your stone, you may experience the spreading of love and support. If you filled out a card, you can bring it to me. Um, on the card, please indicate whether your comment is confidential or to be shared. If you need to stay where you are, feel free to raise the card so someone can get it and bring it up here for you. If you're attending virtually, you may write your joys and concerns in the comment at this time, but know that they will be public and read aloud. Please come up the aisle Ben is standing in front of to drop a stone and bring up your cards. We drop a stone for joys and concerns not spoken, and we will drop another for joys and concerns we will experience in the coming week. Let's have a moment of silence as we hold these joys and concerns in our heart.
and now time for the offering. The important work of this fellowship is possible because of your generous contribution of time, talent, and treasure. Every contribution of every size is helpful and appreciated. As we pass the offering baskets, we invite you to share financially. If you prefer, you may give at our website by texting online or by mailing checks to our office. like writing with your main hand after years of having it tied behind your back but the words come so much easier and your stories come alive than the pen is slapped from your hand and you're left fighting the urge to cry but it's the joy of the sunrise, it's the smell after rain, it's the happiness you finally feel after a lifetime of pain, it's the love of friends that shows you you're not alone, it's the hope of a journey. It's like wearing glasses for the first time When you've been struggling to see for your whole life You get made fun of and they fog up all the time But still, it's far better than being blind It's the joy the sunrise is the smell after rain is the happiness you finally feel after a lifetime of pain it's the love of friends that shows you you're not alone it's the hope of the journey yourself inside the mirror because you finally look the way you'd always hoped or at least you see the possibility of the person you were meant to be and for the first time you love yourself for the first time
It's the love of friends that shows you you're not alone. It's the hope of the journey home. You shouldn't have to be brave to show the world who you are. That's from Sky's song, Visible, which she will perform in a few minutes. And President Biden wrote something similar in his 2023 proclamation on Transgender Day of Visibility. No one should have to be brave just to be themselves. The word trans or transgender is an umbrella term including trans women, trans men, and gender non-conforming people such as your non-binary speaker. Trans Day of Visibility, also known as TDOV, T-D-O-V, is March 31st and we're celebrating it early as I mentioned a few minutes ago. And in the next few minutes, I want to say more about TDOV, propose a move beyond visibility and suggest a few changes, a few actions. First, let's consider TDOV itself. To help us understand TDOV, I want to share words from two sources. The first is a short article posted by the 19th on TDOV 2021. Rachel Crandall Crocker, the creator of International Transgender Day of Visibility, wanted people to have a moment of happiness. So she made a Facebook post encouraging people to organize festivities in their hometowns and started messaging accounts from all over the world. It was worth a shot. I'd been wanting there to be a special day for us for a long time, she recalled. And I was waiting and waiting for someone else to do it. And then finally I said, I'm not waiting anymore, I'm going to do it. It was 2009, and at the time, the only annual event that most transgender communities had was nothing to celebrate. In 1998, Rita Hester, a black transgender woman in Boston, was brutally stabbed in her own apartment. Transgender women were tired of being targets and done being dismissed by the press, which misgendered Hester as they do. They marched through Hester's Boston neighborhood and Transgender Day of Remembrance, TDOR, a day honoring transgender homicide victims, was born. Crandall Crocker sometimes attended the community funeral. She felt it was important, but when she did, it left her depressed for up to a week afterward. I wanted a day that we can celebrate the living, she said, and I wanted a day that all over the world we could be all together. So Crandall Crocker, who had lost a marriage when she came out and a job as a psychotherapist when she transitioned, decided to create the day herself. March 31st would be International Transgender Day of Visibility. The date wasn't significant as much as it was convenient. It was far enough away from TDOR in November and Pride Month in June that it wouldn't conflict with either. From her home in Michigan, she organized a panel just outside of Detroit, and maybe people would come or see the Facebook post or hold their own events, she thought. Maybe. And now she talks about those early days with near disbelief. Millions of people now recognize March 31st as a day to celebrate transgender people worldwide. Every major LGBTQ plus rights organization recognizes Transgender Day of Visibility with community gatherings, panels, and celebrations. Skyscrapers across the nation light up with light pink, blue, and white transgender pride colors on that day. 
Transgender Day of Visibility is a spark of hope, said Nia Clark, a black trans woman, and also a child welfare consultant. Clark said, it's just signaling to others that we are here and there are more than just one of you. That there are resources out there, that there are people in existence who also would just like you. Later on, the article says that Andrea Jenkins, vice president of the Minneapolis City Council and the first out black trans elected official in the country, says those conversations about trans people living vibrant and full lives are critical, especially in this moment. Jenkins notes that 44 transgender people were murdered in 2020, the highest number ever recorded at that time. We don't want to just wallow in this, Jenkins said. We also want to acknowledge the reality that our lives are beautiful and matter. And then the less people are able to say, oh, I don't know a trans person, or I don't think people need to recognize the humanity of trans and gender nonconforming people. This year's Transgender Day of Visibility, the article continues, so this was three years ago. This year's Transgender Day of Visibility comes at a particularly trying moment for gender diverse people in the United States. <clears throat> More than 80 anti-trans bills are pending in state legislatures. According to the Human Rights Campaign, most of those bills would limit trans youth from playing sports and accessing affirming medical care. And the situation is worse today. So, you know, we've been on this trend of getting worse and worse and worse each year. Well, that's some helpful information. Let's hear what President Biden had to say about this in 2020, in the last year. Transgender Day of Visibility celebrates the joy, strength, and absolute courage of some of the bravest people I know. People who have too often had to put their jobs, relationships, and lives on the line just to be their true selves. Today, we show millions of transgender and non-binary Americans that we, that we see them, they belong, and they should be treated with dignity and respect. Their courage has given countless others strength, but no one should have to be brave just to be themselves. Every American deserves that freedom. Transgender Americans shape our nation's soul. Proudly serving in the military, curing, de curing deadly diseases, holding elected office, running thriving businesses, fighting for justice, raising families, and much more. As kids, they deserve what every child deserves, the chance to learn in safe and supportive schools, to develop meaningful relationships, and to live openly and honestly. As adults, they deserve the same rights enjoyed by every American, including equal access to health care, housing, and jobs, and the chance to age with grace as senior citizens. But today, too many transgender Americans are still denied those rights and freedoms. A wave of discriminatory state laws is targeting transgender youth terrifying families and hurting kids who are not hurting anyone. An epidemic of violence against transgender women and girls, in particular women and girls of color, has taken lives far too soon. After some reflection on what his administration had been doing, the president continued, there is much more to do. I continue to call on the Congress to finally pass the Equality Act and extend long overdue civil rights protections to all LGBTQI plus Americans to ensure they can live with safety and dignity. Together, we also have to keep challenging the hundreds of hateful state laws that have been introduced across the country, making sure every child knows that they are made 
in the image of God, that they are loved, and that we are standing up for them. America is founded on the idea that all people are created equal and deserve to be treated equally throughout their lives. We have never fully lived up to that, but we have never walked away from it either. Today, as we celebrate transgender people, we also celebrate every American's fundamental right to be themselves, bringing us closer to realizing America's full purpose. Just be who you are, right? Now that we understand what Trans Day of Visibility is, I know that several of you already knew, let's think beyond visibility. Because visibility is not enough. TDOV helps people acknowledge trans existence and experience. And I would like for us to consider more than simple acknowledgement, especially in two ways, embrace and integration. First, let's consider a move from visibility to embrace. Acknowledging trans lives is good, but we can do more. We can accept trans people as real people not as oddities to be tolerated, but as real people, full people, normal people, as human as any cisgender person, as human as anyone who's living the gender they were assigned at birth. Second, let's consider a move from visibility to integration. Acknowledging trans lives is good, but we can do more. We can actually include them. We can actually include us in every aspect of life. We live in a society designed by and for cisgender, heterosexual, rich, white men. And diversifying the people at the table in planning and making decisions can help all of us to feel and be included, respected, and influential. So we know Trans Day of Visibility and we've thought beyond visibility, what's next? What can we do? I want to offer four ways that we can contribute to trans normalcy. First, personal relationships. Too many people don't know, don't knowingly know trans people. And if we don't know trans people, it can be hard for us to accept and include them. We can want to, we might even think we do, but knowing us is a prerequisite for fully including us. So I encourage you to get to know us. Spend time with us. If we have events or meetings that you hear of, consider attending. And in your relationships with people who don't understand trans identity and experience, use what you learn from us to educate friends and family members who are willing to learn. but don't require us to educate you. Um, if you spend time with us, you will learn, but the, we shouldn't have that burden on us. Um, also, it's important to, to show up. Whenever there's an opportunity to fight for trans rights, if you are on our side, it's very helpful for you to show up because not all of us can. Some of us can be out in public, but some of us can't. And so allies can, can help with that, right? Can help kind of counter that 
number and representation situation that we have. And kind of help change society so that we don't have to hide. Okay, so first is personal relationships. Second is financial support. For There are multiple organizations uh, locally and, and beyond that work with and for trans lives. And so I would encourage you to learn about those and uh, support them financially as possible because as you know, work can, not much work can be done without money. <laughs> financial support is important. And third is organizational culture. You know, there are a lot of ways to be a Unitarian Universalist congregation. And how the group is put together, how we make decisions, what we do, how we do it, um, it's kind of it's our, our, our culture. And so if we want to fully incorporate a more diverse group of people than the group that started this congregation. We have to kind of rethink everything so that we're not just inviting trans people into a heteronormative organization, um, cis-heteronormative. Um, so diversity at the table, even at the very roots and at the very top, all the way through. Um, and you're doing, a, you're doing that. You're on your way there. And I encourage you to continue that path and not change direction there. You are on the right path. Goodness, not many churches would do this, what we're doing this morning, right? So thank you. Fourth, well, let me back up to third, organizational culture, because I want to say a little more. A lot of us have experienced religious trauma because of our identities. And so we need safe spaces like this. It's not just something to do because it's a good thing to do, but it, it actually can help save lives. Now, fourth, is political ag advocacy, which I know many of you love. Uh, so many legal actions attack our existence and value. So I encourage you to stay informed, get involved, call your representatives, influence on social media, show up at events, be present, and active in many areas, including trans rights. Let's review a little. So Trans Day of Visibility celebrates gender diversity, but visibility is not enough. We need to, em we need embrace, we need to embrace and integrate, and we can act for justice in personal relationships financial support, organizational culture, and political advocacy. And that applies to everyone. But let me end with a short message to a few. To those of us who are trans, whether trans women or trans men or otherwise trans, I hope that you can feel accepted and loved and respected because you are and you shouldn't have to be brave to show the world who you are. join me for another hymn in your teal hymnal. We're turning the page 1017. Please rise if you are willing and able.
Please join me in extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light that shines in our hearts and in all the galleries of the rainbow. Time for the announcements. Um, so your announcements will also be in your order of service. Um, but today we have a Web of Life meeting after service at 1230. It'll be here in the sanctuary. There's a climate justice meeting on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, there will be um, a UUFF meditation garden dedication with the Shermer family at the front of the fellowship building. Um, there Also Sunday, there will be a Being You You class next Sunday um, after service in the sanctuary, and there's more details on the back of your uh, thing. <laughs> Thank you. It's like achieving the goals of your childhood dream and it be everything that you hoped it be and no one can know just how much that it means so I'm sorry for it being my whole personality it's like having your life in a constant fight and seeing So they ask you why you're so triggered all the time I guess out of sight, out of mind
Closing words come from Reverend Mr. Barb Grieve. <clears throat> Blessed are the trailblazers who brought us this far and are still trailblazing, still celebrating. Blessed are the drag queens and kings who remind us not to take life too seriously. And different, different lines in this reading will apply to different ones of us, and I hope that you connect with something here. Blessed are the gender benders, non-binary, gender fluid, and third gender folk, those who challenge us to reframe our gender paradigm. Blessed are the young ones who present fearlessly from the start. Blessed are their parents who make space for freedom and love their children fiercely. Blessed are the siblings and relatives who educate, support, and love us as we are. Blessed are the genderqueer youth who are struggling and persist. Blessed are the 90-year-olds just coming out and those who have been out decades. Blessed are those whose lives were cut too short. May their stories live on through us. Blessed are the survivors. May they keep on living. Blessed are the allies learning to be accomplices. Blessed are those who gathered here today, witnessing, learning, celebrating. May we all commit to continue showing up, fighting for justice, celebrating all the genders in life. Oh, man, may it be so. And now uh, we usually have some refreshments at the back. Feel free to stick around and visit. Thank you for being here.